And when I was trying to put the connection together, because there is nobody putting the connection together, or very few of us, in terms of breathing volume and obstructive sleep apnea, I looked at asthma. And I asked the question, why would asthma, why do approximately 74% of asthmatics experience nocturnal symptoms of airflow obstruction secondary to their airways disease? The incidence of obstructive sleep apnea is generally recognized to be about 20 to 30% of the population. I know many people are undiagnosed. Why does it increase with asthma? Why is obstructive sleep apnea hypopnea more significant, more prevalent with patients with severe compared to moderate asthma? That as asthma severity increases, so does obstructive sleep apnea. What's the relationship between the two? Asthma is inflammation of the lower airways not necessarily inflammation of the upper airways. But as your asthma becomes more severe, how do you breathe? Does your breathing get lighter or does your breathing get heavier? If you had somebody walk into this room with severe asthma, how are they breathing? They will be out of breath, literally just walking into the room. If they were to sit down and rest for 10 minutes to recover, you will still see noticeable breathing. The more severe our asthma, the more we breed. Our tidal volume increases and the respiratory rate increases. In other words, the number of breaths we take per minute increases, as does the size of each breath. In this here, 88% of patients in the severe asthma group, 58% of patients in moderate, and 31% in controls had more than 15 apneic events per hour. Again, what is the relationship between asthma severity and obstructive sleep apnea? 472 patients with poorly controlled asthma. In other words, if your asthma is under control, you'll have less risk of obstructive sleep apnea. If your asthma is out of control and you need more than three puffs of your reliever medication per week, it's considered that it's one of the, the factors that would deem poor asthma control and it increases the risk. The question is, if breathing volume is brought towards normal, the negative pressure is reduced and apnea is reduced. Can we improve asthma control? And the other aspect to this is, is it that sleep disorder breathing is causing inflammation of the airways? Or is it the fact that we're breathing too much, including mouth breathing, contributing to inflammation of the upper airways? I'm sure that you've often been out one night and you've had a few drinks of alcohol and you've come back and heavy breathing as a result of alcohol and muscles relax. And you wake up the next morning and your throat feels totally raw as a result of it. <sighs> All that heavy breathing in and out of your mouth, your throat is raw, your throat is inflamed. That's an exaggerated example. But when we breathe heavy, it does contribute to inflammation of the upper airways. So here's the tie-in again. Over breathing, mouth breathing, causing inflammation, and inflammation causing narrowing of the airways, Bernoulli effect and Venturi principle. And yes, there is a relationship between our breathing and inflammation of the airways. I took this from the New England Journal of Medicine. It's an article called Hypocapnia. And basically it states that airway hypocapnia, which is causing smooth muscle contraction, increased amounts of mucus, causing airway resistance, increases the work of breathing, increases the sensation of breathlessness, feeds into hyperventilation, which feeds back into airway hypocapnia. The carbon dioxide model is a little bit controversial. However, the cooling and dehydration effect of the airways is not necessarily controversial. It's accepted. People with asthma don't just breathe heavy because of their condition. Their heavy breathing is feeding back into the condition. I'm just going to show a brief video to show you. So in terms of improving asthma control, this was a clinical trial that took place in Calgary. 
Um, it was 2008. And basically, with the Buteco group asthma control, which is normal, 40% of the asthma population having their asthma under control is normal. It improved asthma control from 40 to 79%. Now, the control group, a physiotherapist came in from South Africa, and she taught reduced breathing with relaxation. And she also achieved a great asthma control. When you bring in reduced breathing and relaxation, you reset the respiratory center in the brain, and as a result, breathing becomes lighter. Now, the main difference here was that the Buteyko group had significantly less need for inhaled corticosteroid. My point here is, there's a relationship between asthma control and obstructive sleep apnea. When you change breathing, you can improve asthma control. And by virtue, we should be able to improve obstructive sleep apnea, but it's never been studied. We have minute ventilation, the amount of air that an individual is breathing during rest, and the amount of air that that individual is breathing during their sleep. And the question to ask is, what would happen if we changed their breathing volume more towards normal to reduce negative pressure? Could we reduce the AHI index? Now, I have worked with thousands of individuals and I have seen the changes, but that's only anecdotal evidence. There's no point in me talking about it. And by the way, I came from a history of asthma and obstructive sleep apnea. So I work in this field primarily because of the effects it had on my own life. And it had a huge effect. And I, I'm not just that subject or the case. You know, I had 25 years of it. And that gives me the motivation then to reach out and to try and investigate where is the link here? But we do need more research.